Hey everyone, just wanted to uh, jump on here and uh, just let everybody know that uh, <clears throat> just testing this new mic out and uh, trying to get some better sound and I hope we're coming across good here. Uh, so anyhow, let's, uh, I had mentioned that we were going to be having another message coming up and uh, if you're wondering we wanted to go with uh, a message here. I felt the Lord put on my heart. Um, it, it was there was there was a lot at play here, and uh, I've told you before that I I'm not one that wants to come out and just do something I thought up on my own. I, I want to feel that the Lord has has been cultivating something in my heart uh, that I can I can share with you, and that is what we're doing this evening here. Um. I have a lot, but I'm going to try and, 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 and shorten it up uh, as much as I can here, just sake of time. and, and uh, But anyhow, uh, God, we just asked you this evening that you would move mightily, God, to the listeners, the ears, the hearts, God. Lord, that you would plant seed, your word, God. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you're your shadow, your your mercy, God, your grace would surround families, God. We just pray, God, that you would move, God, on those, God, when your word goes out, God, that seed would take hold and begin to sprout. God, the miracle of life would begin to bud, Lord, as we're in the spring, God, and we're seeing it all around us. How can anyone deny you, Lord? And Lord, I just praise you, God, and I just ask that that this word, God, that you, God, have put in my heart and on my mind, God, that, that it would go out. God, that it would perform what you set out for it to do. And you're going to get the glory. You're going to get the praise. I use your words. I use your spirit, God. Not mine, nothing of me, God. But you are everything to us, God. And you can be there for anyone everywhere at any time, Lord. And I just pray, God, right now that you would move tonight, God, on on. Uh, some seed that was planted earlier, God. And I know, God, that you're reaching, God. Lord, you're moving, amen, in this land, God. And I just thank you, Lord, for that. And God, we just praise you and give you the glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Well, I, I wanted to come to you tonight. Um, I, I, I could have went so many different ways. I, I, I just, um, a forgotten king. We could have, we could have titled this tonight uh, uh, the forgotten king um we 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 could have we could have said he went away he is coming back and that was the early title that i felt the lord wanted me but uh for some reason last minute and i mean last minute a, a day or so ago um the lord just put on my heart and said you've been hacked So some of you have been hacked. Some of you are required a ransom to get your life back. Some of you are being told, some of you are being preached at, that in order for this to happen, in order for God to do this for you, that you got to listen to the pastor. You got to come to church more. You got to give more in tithes. You've got to do this and that. You've got to really get your act together. If you want something from God, here's what's got to happen. And if you don't do it, you can't expect it from God. You have no right to ask God for it. But I'm here to tell you that's a lie from the devil and the deceivers that are telling you that today. He said, through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast, not of your own. Now, this is different. I, I'm telling you, you do not have to listen to some arrogant, self-righteous pastor and, and, and his collage of, 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 of voices behind him that have been won over by him and his, his, his deceivingness, his deception and twisting of the Scripture. 
you know, the, 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 the primary reason for a hacker is to gain access to your mind, to what's yours, to your credibility. They need your attachments. They need your wealth. They need your funding. They want to assume your identity. And for whatever reason, for just pure gain, pure evil, uh, to make themselves powerful, I guess all the above could c apply. But I remember uh, when, when the Lord was talking about the, the children of Israel, that they had broken cisterns that hold no water. Zero. As soon as they fill it up, they're emptied. And I have a lot to say with, with this generation's religion and the previous generations with religion, which I was all about for many years. And as I explained to uh, someone today, uh, I consider a friend. And it doesn't take much common sense to know what these churches, what these religions, what these deceivers are trying to convince you of. I could, I would love to, but I am not going to go into all the, the scripture and the, the things that I, I have taught on previously to justify what I'm saying. You go back and listen. Go back to YouTube. Listen to these. These are things that Jesus wants you to know. See, many are looking for someone who's not coming today because you've been hacked. You're looking at the wrong emails. You're getting messages from the wrong source. See, that Jesus you're told is coming back ain't, ain't going to come back. Because that's not the right Jesus. He said those that are looking for him and watching will see him when he comes. But if your eyes are on the wrong target, if your eyes are on the wrong master, if you have been hacked, if you are running a totally different program today, if you are subservient to man, if you have, have, have given yourself over to the earth, become earthly, God's coming back after a spiritual church, not some watered-down mortal man's kingdom. If that was good enough, God would have kept it in place under the law of Moses. But the blood of goats and bullocks was not pleasing to God. Neither could it ever be. And neither could it ever remove sin. That's why God had to robe himself in flesh and appear to us in the face of Jesus Christ. Many of you are not serving the real Jesus. And I, I always thought that was, well, there's only one real Jesus. I mean, the Bible's the Bible, right? God has opened my heart, my mind to see the fallacy, the unfruitful dividends of religion. Folks, you're serving religion. And I don't care if they're nine out of ten things right in what they're teaching. If that one thing is off, it's a deception.
He said he's coming after a bride who hath made herself ready. Now you tell me what groom is going to marry an unfaithful bride. You see, some of you have been told to lie in the slop and the, the, the vomit from man that that they're 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 part of the bridegroom. They're 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 part of that that wedding party. And you got the pastor, the elders, and 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 all these that are that are gonna be up there as the 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 best men, right? The 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 ones that are gonna be there supporting. Well, that's what they want you to believe. But he said you have one master called no man father, but one. And when Jesus, when Jesus said, come follow me, he didn't say, come follow us. See, if you just, just in your, just a simple common sense, step back from all the twisting of Scripture that you're listening to, from, from all the, the, the placating of, of, of Scripture that, that man is trying to hook you in with, if you just back up and you say, wait, the scribes and the Pharisees were keepers of the law of that day of Moses. That was the religion and the way of the day in the Old Testament, the old law. But Jesus came, get this. Now, now they're trying to bring the old law over with and blend it and mix it. So, and we we've talked about that putting uh, new wine in old bottles. Jesus said that can't happen. It's just going to burst the bottle. We 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 had it. We had a message on that. If you want to go back and look at it. But I'm telling you, when Jesus, what what made the religious leaders of that day so angry to the point of murder, and they did. They worked it out. They made it happen. And Jesus told them, I, I was before Abraham. And they're like, you, were, you, you aren't yet 50 years old. So how can you have been back with Abraham? He said, before Abraham was, I am. They knew what that I am meant. So, they knew that Jesus had picked out 12 apostles. And what was Jesus' words to those 12 apostles? Come, follow me. And he told Peter and Andrew, I will make you fishers of men. You come follow me. Did he say, hey, you go, go talk to the elders of the church, of the, of the temple, Talk to the scribes and the, and the Pharisees, and, and, and let's, let's get this all worked out. Let's, let's have a meeting. Let's, let's, let's go sit in a room, and, 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 and I'm going to show you what part I'm going to play in all this. Do you see, have you ever heard of any of that being recorded? Do you see or ever heard that man was going to be in between you and Jesus Christ? No, you don't. You don't see it in there. It's not written in there. And there's a reason it's not written in there, because Jesus never intended for it to be. And you look at Galatians 1, 6 through 9, and, and, and you look and you see that the, the gospel that was preached early on about Jesus he said, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Notice how the common theme is Christ, Jesus. They mention his name. They will cast out demons in his name. They will do many wonderful works in his name. And the Lord said, I will profess to you that I never knew you. 
Verse 8 of Galatians 1 says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach another gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, this is while it was fresh when, they, when Jesus just left. If we preach anything other than Jesus, if we start getting off course here, we start building our own kingdom instead of Jesus' kingdom, which was a spiritual kingdom, and we, we start getting into the, 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 the covetousness and the, and the other thing, we start going astray from what you've been taught about Jesus he said, let him be accursed. Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel. And then verse 9 says, and as we said before, so say I now again. Here's the second time. I mean it, I'm not playing. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, what is received? Something that changed your life that you have received from God, let him be accursed. Now, man is wanting to preach all the time about, hey, fill in the house of God and make numbers, and, and man, oh, if we if people just give more, we could do more. How many times you heard that? And they're supposed to be serving a God that, that can, can make meal feed the prophet, and continue feeding the last bit of meal to feed the prophet and to, to, to continue feeding the mother and the son and not run out. We're, we're talking about uh, 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 the one that they're supposed to be serving, the one that they're supposed to be so confident in that they preach to you. He's the one that, that can turn water into wine. But they need your money. They need you. They need you there. They need, they need your resources. You see, because it's all a farce. It's a lie. They're deceiving you. It's not what God has to do. It's not what we're to do. We are to live a godly life separated from the world. Pleasing to God, not man. And all these extraneous, extraneous uh, rules and laws that they pile on you. Jesus said that they, they were hypocrites that were doing it. He said, do as they say, because they were under the law. And, and, and I cannot stress enough. And I, I just ask you, go back and listen. Because Jesus was speaking under the law. And until he died and rose again, that covenant, that new covenant, was not in force. But there was an area there, a gray area, that Jesus was moving people from the old to the new. That's why he talked about the wine. That's why he gave Joel 2 and 28 in the last days. And you know that wine came back as, as when, he, when he, at the wedding, he said, listen, that the, the, the top guy there at the, the, the party said, listen, most people serve the new wine first. He said, but you saved the best for last. And this is exactly what Joel 2 and 28 said, in the last days I will pour out of my spirit. You see the connection there. And this, this spirit is the Holy Ghost, which will lead and guide you and I into all truth and righteousness. He never Never. Jesus never said, hey, here you go, man. Take it from here. When he told Peter that what he said on the day of Pentecost, that was the opening. He gave him the key. The key is just to open the door. So he gave us the plan of salvation, Acts 2.38. We must repent. Jesus said it in, in John 3 and 5 through 8. Except you be born again, you cannot enter or see the kingdom of God. So Jesus already said it. He gave a glimpse ahead of what Peter was to tell. So here we are. 
leaning on God, not man. And 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 here we are. You you've been taught about rules. You've been taught about ordinances. You you you've been taught to be submissive to man. You you you've you've they have established their hierarchical, uh, replacing the leading of the Holy Ghost and the Comforter. That rest where he said, ye shall call the weary to rest. The teacher, amen, the anointing. Because Jesus went away to send us the truth and the leadership directly from God, his spirit in you. So when you look at the scripture, when you when you read, when you when you open your heart, when you when you throw about throw away all that garbage, I call it garbage because it's it's twisted to build man's kingdom. Jesus said, I'd rather that you were hot or cold. I'd rather you know nothing about religion. Because it's not about religion, it's about salvation. It's not building man's kingdom. They they have they have literally planted bad seed. They can, oh, I gotta go to church three times a week. I gotta be at every prayer meeting. I gotta do this and that. Jesus said, if you're gonna pray, you enter into the closet. But no, if you if you if you miss that if you miss that pastor's prayer meeting, oh, it's required. Well, don't don't plan on singing at church. You you understand all this. You see. I hope you're seeing. I hope you see that there there is a carrot out there. You do this or else. You do this. You obey man. You do this. That, that nowhere. Nowhere. Is there any platform in Jesus' church? Nowhere is there a choir to be in in Jesus' church. You make melody in your heart to the Lord. Do you not see the contrast of what man tries to display? They're, They're no more about anything but Hollywood. It's a performance. It's fake. You want to follow God or follow man? Man can't get you to heaven. God, through the face, the blood of Jesus, is the only way. The leading and guiding and the understanding with the Holy Ghost is how you are going to find your destination of eternal life. But you see, Jesus told us in Matthew 16, Unto his disciples, if any man will come after who? Me. Not me, Lonnie. Not me, man. But Jesus. He said, let him deny himself. What do you suppose denying self means? That means I'm going to put away any of my ambitions to be something in the church, man's church. I'm not, I'm not going to look for something of myself. You got to deny yourself and take up his cross and follow me, he said. Did he say, follow us, follow man, follow your pastor? No. Pastors only mentioned one time in the New Testament, a part of what it calls a fivefold ministry, which two of them are, are un, unfollowable because they've already been done. And anyone with the Holy Ghost can do the other three and should be. That's your own personal witness. And you will hold the hand and help people. You will open up to them things that they may need to ask you as, as you lead them to Jesus. You may take on some of those roles, but it's not your obligation as a duty to be in that office. There is not an office. It's the Holy Ghost that will lead and guide you. He said, when you go to speak, think not what you should say, but rely on the Holy Ghost to witness with you and for you and through you. 
That's what he's talking about. I have witnessed to people, and I have just listened to myself. I didn't know I knew that. I didn't know that. That was the Holy Ghost. And I miraculously listened and watched the Holy Ghost start revealing things and speaking of things that that person didn't tell anyone. And sometimes later I would find out that that God was showing me through you. And, and I didn't know. I, I'm, I'm, I just want to please Jesus. And that's all we should want to do. Not be some leader. Not be some, some look at me. I'm a pastor. I'm an elder. I'm this, I'm that. I'm a Sunday school superintendent. Hey, I'm the lead worshiper. I'm this or that. Who are you? He said, deny yourself. Except you deny yourself and take up your cross, you cannot be my disciple. How is that so difficult? And when you apply it to a church, when you apply it to an organization, and when you apply it to those things, Jesus is nowhere to be found. And he went on, he said, "What for, for, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profiteth if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, just with that right there, I, I want to I just, I, I have posted this on Facebook today. And I listened to this video a, a, a night or so ago. And this whistleblower, you don't know what a whistleblower is, somebody that finally come out and told the truth and told things that uh, they were hiding. And this, this, this man from the LDS, Latter-day Saints, uh, Mormon Church, he was a portfolio manager, finance, and he said this church, 2018, had $100 billion. There were 17 million people in this church, membership, that pay tithes which is a tenth of their income into the church. And he said, the reason I took this job, I didn't want to go into Wall Street and, and just, just look out for myself. He goes, I wanted purpose in, in what I'd learned through college and finance. I wanted to help people. And he said, I thought by, by joining this, this church and, and, and through faith that I could build God's kingdom, I could play a part in this, which is, which is the same old slop that we're, we're all told, that we got to go to church to be saved. you got to be under a pastor to, to, to make it to heaven. That's, that's, that's the garbage they want to pile down your throat. Anyhow, that's, that was his mission. And he said, as I got more and more into things, I never seen anything go back out to the poor people. I never seen any money come back out of the church. It was just collecting. And he goes, when, when questioned, it would be that they were building for the apocalypse, that they would have money. But they were, they were also taking advantage and, 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 and cheating the tax system because they were, they were putting that money saving for-profit uh, companies that they were they were uh, insurance company to be exact and and they said they had put in 600 million dollars to save that company and he just thought it was wrong and as as he he just could not be part of that anymore and so he he wrote a letter to the irs and 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 you can look it up but but my point is that, and I mentioned on, on our Facebook um, chat thing there, I said, hey, listen, you know, I've been in UPCI for many years, off and on, just a couple times off and on, but the years that I've been in, I've never seen anything come back from organization that wasn't meant to be an investment for that organization. And I'll tell you, folks, that is going to be judged very harshly. Those people that take money from the poor, and many people are poor. I was so poor when I came into the church. You know, they, they, they lie in wait for those that have broken lives, broken families, um, people going to jail, 
these people are needing something and 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 if they see opportunity to give you a hundred bucks to pay your light bill and they can they can somehow get you straightened out a little bit get you working maybe old joe brother joe has a has a company and he needs help and man you get in there and oh, give him a job joe and you you start paying that 10 percent into the church see one of the things you you y'all think that that they they don't think like that you think oh that pastor's oh he's holy he he loves god and he would never do that the very fact that the very building of that church is against the gospel against what jesus said and nothing that jesus was for when he went to the temple to teach he went because there was people there looking for God. He didn't go to approve it. He didn't go, he, and, and, and you didn't see, you won't see in all the writings where they were there every Sunday. They was there every Sabbath on Saturday. They, they, they went to the temple every week. They, oh, they, they came under subjection to the, to the elders. No, you don't see that because Jesus said, follow me. There's a new sheriff in town. That didn't go over well with the religious sect that day, of that day. So when you look at this there, wolves in sheep's clothing, just like Jesus said. When his disciples said, Lord, what, what's going to be in the end of time? What should we look for? And Jesus said, take heed, let no man deceive you number one right there right off the bat the jesus that i'm looking for wouldn't put up with half of the stuff that goes on in a man built kingdom they call church there would be no pastors if Jesus came and showed up right now, which he won't, he'll show up to take his church out of here. But right now it's left to you and I to seek after his spirit and follow him. If he was to come here right now, he was to show up in church, he would not be allowed to speak. You all know that. But let me tell you what we have hope for. And many of you know this by heart. John 14 and 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This, now let me, let me set this up a little bit. You see, Jesus came on the scene as a man, but did miracles, raised the dead, turned the water into wine, walked on water, calmed storms, caused the sea and the, and the wind to obey him. Three days dead, he raised Lazarus. This is who he was. He did all this to prove, to show that he was the Savior. He was God in the flesh. He was the Christ, the sacrifice to bring mankind back to himself. And so when you look at that, when Jesus showed up, never before had anything like this happened. There was men of God that spoke by the oracles of God, that God moved on men and spoke. But they never claimed to be God. They never claimed to be the I am that knew Abraham before Abraham was. None of them claimed that. None of them had ever died and came back to life. None of them had plans to do that. So Jesus was trying to let them know, let not your heart be troubled, but ye believe in God. Ye believe in creator. Believe also in me. What he's saying is, I'm him. I'm part of the same power. In my father's house, in heaven, is what he's saying. Are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, if I go, if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now imagine that. Myself. He could have easily said, God the Father, because we're different. He didn't. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Give me the same respect because that's who I am. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, I'm, I'm standing on that promise, my friend. I hope you are too. I want to be where he is. I want to be with the one that saved me. And John 16 and 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus said, it is expedient. It is very necessary for you that I go away. Remember, he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, if I go. And he said, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the what? Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he, who? The comforter, the spirit of God. As on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Acts 2, and Jesus said in verse 8, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Remember, he said that the law came by Moses, but truth and grace came by Jesus Christ. He, who, he, who is he? The Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment because now truth shows up. I can tell you, I can tell you by reading the Old Testament, I can tell you by, by what we have available to us that there was subterfuge there was man that 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 looked after himself they may have spoke the word of god but they were not always godly but jesus had to bring truth pureness righteousness not deception he did not come for himself. So here you go. Don't forget John 14, 25, and 6. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And he said, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, whom the Father will send in my name. Now, I know the Trinity tries to change this, this name thing to, oh, it means authority, by my authority. Well, Jesus' name Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation any other, for there's neither none other name under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. And, and the Bible said in Colossians 2 and 9, Colossians 2 and 9, that <laughs> whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. So they, they may try to take that name in, 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 the, in Matthew 28, 19 and make it into Father, Son, Holy Ghost and call it the authority. They can, they, can, they can twist those words all they want to get you to believe in, in three gods when there's only one. And they'll say that, oh, well, it's, not, it's three in one. And they, they try, to, try to play that game with you. But, but Deuteronomy 6 and 4 said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And God said, Beside me there is no other. There is no other God beside me. I know not any. And when Jesus said, Let us go, he said, The Bible tells us that God worketh all things by the counsel of his own will. So he counsels himself, not two other partners. 
that's not what it is at all. He said, believe there's one God. He said, the devils believe and do tremble. God is so good. God will open these things up to you if you have a pure heart to serve him. As you're able to receive those things, God will enlighten you. Some of you, your eyes have been dimmed. Some of those that may hear this later on or if you're watching right now, I have no idea. Don't look at it. But I'm telling you, your eyes have been dimmed. We spoke a couple weeks ago about uh, the beginning of life and, and growing old. The clock of life is ticking. It's ticking down to a mortal end. We are not gaining time, my friend. We are not gaining time to make important decisions right now. We grow ever closer to our spiritual eternity. Our time on earth, the Bible says, is but a vapor. It's here, and then it's gone. Jesus said, Mark 14 and 62, he said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, coming in the clouds of heaven. Remember, Jesus said, if I go, I'll come again. And I'm telling you, some are, are biting at, at, at the wrong bait. You're, 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 they're, they're, they're throwing bait out. And you're chewing this stuff up. You're so far away from Jesus today that, that he's not even the Jesus the Bible talks about. You, you've, you've, went, you've went so far into man's epistles and letters and and they have they have they have twisted that around so much and and they don't even know the meaning they're they're telling you this is what god wants this is what jesus wants oh it's right here in timothy oh no it's right here in first peter second peter oh it's over here in this if it don't match what jesus said then it's not of jesus now, some of you say, well, well, the Bible's true. The Bible is true, but not all the Bible is telling you to obey what it's saying. You don't understand the context. As I tell people, look in Acts 15. You're going to see that there were some apostles, some disciples of Jesus that said, listen, you got to be circumcised. And by the end of that, that chapter 15, you're going to see where where James told the Gentiles the very same ones that these other people were causing trouble with them, saying you gotta you gotta be uh, baptized or, or, or uh, circumcised. You gotta you gotta obey the law. And 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 James came back to him said, Hey, don't listen to what these Yehu said. They were wrong. We never gave any such commandments to do that. And when you understand that you do not deviate from Jesus, the other stuff has to fit with what Jesus said and the spirit that he meant by saying it. And if it doesn't jive with that, you can't say, oh, well, Paul said it. And, and you know, the Lord chose Paul and, and, and we must just not understood Jesus. But Paul understood Jesus and he wrote this. So we got to do that. Contrary to Jesus, maybe Jesus changed his mind. Jesus did not change his mind. If those gospels of what Jesus' red letter words said and what they were taught are changed in a later letter in, in the scripture, you have to let every man become a liar and let God be true. Jesus Christ will not deviate. If you want to go with man, then you have left the faith. Of Jesus Christ. You are now serving another Jesus, though there is no other Jesus. And there are people today, I've heard them with my own mouth, ears, that, that have said, they take what Paul had to say and they live by what Paul says. 
And Paul even said, I have not even baptized people because I don't want somebody to say I baptized them in my own name. But you got people that will follow what Paul says over what Jesus said and think they're going to heaven. They're teaching this. If you think Jesus was about a, 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 a natural church, you're off your rocker. And so is the false teacher teaching you that crap. Jesus didn't speak about it. Matter of fact, when he did address it, those that were in it, he called them hypocrites. And where they're going, he said, wasn't a good place. And even when his apostles, disciples, told him, to, oh, look at the temple, he had nothing great to say about it. He said every stone will be turned. If Jesus spoke about a church, a physical church, like they say today, that you go to today, if he talked about that church, you would still have that church from Jerusalem where he made the statement that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. But he was not talking about a physical church. And neither is there one today from Jesus. And when you want to, you want to, you want to, hey, bring it on. Pull out your sword. You, you go to the well where the lady was. She said, this is our Jacob, our father's well. And Jesus said, the time will come and now is when the father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth. It will not be a place. It will not be a location. But you will listen and do and please and be used by the anointing of God, which is the Holy Ghost that would come that we talked about, the comforter. And he will bring all things to your remember whatsoever I've said unto you. John 14, 25 and 26. Go back to that. Don't you get sidetracked. Don't you let these false teachers push you off into some church. Oh, I'm going to build this kingdom for Jesus. Oh, my time. I, I, Lord, I, I, when, when seen we the hungered? Yeah, while you were out there paying attention to some other man that was guiding you. When you didn't let the Holy Ghost guide you. Not going to be a good day, people. That's why Ephesians said, stand there for having your loins girt about with what? Truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Whose gospel? The garbage the man is preaching to you over a pulpit. He's already up in a big high place. <coughs> Excuse me. I just have some, some, somewhat of a problem with all the things that Jesus said to see even if there was a pastor, and I don't see it in the Scripture, don't. It's not there. For them to be elevated above you, Jesus said not to do that. He said, ye are all brethren. I've given you Scripture over and over again. You can go back to some of the other messages. You'll see it in the Bible. Jesus said, that's not going to happen in my kingdom. There's not going to be people above others. He said, well, if, you're, if you're even getting, a, getting close to thinking about any of that stuff, you're going to be at the bottom. The greater is going to be the less, and the less is going to be the greater. That's what I'm looking at. In other words, he's not putting, putting de, uh, deviation or division there. He's just saying, listen, we all got to be humble. You're all going to be humble. You're all going to be on the same playing field. I'm the salvation. Man is not and never will be. And again, take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, in the spirit, not from your pastor, not from a man, not from a priest, and watching thereunto with all perseverance 
and supplication for all saints or those that are believers of Jesus. And I want to encourage you that, that finding this Jesus, the true Jesus, not, not the one that is preached on over the pulpits, not, not the false Jesus that they portray to you where they're over Jesus. And you got, if, if Jesus is going to talk to you, then he's going to talk through them. That's what they're preaching today. The, the, the once that I thought was, was the closest to the Bible organization ever, that's what they're preaching today. I don't know how I was bamboozled so long. I have read my Bible. But God chose in these later times to, to open my eyes to it. And thank God he did. You're gonna, you, you just believe what you want to believe, but if you'll open yourself up to the Spirit of God, if you will seek him, and you will say, God, I'm doing all I can, but my, my top priority is to be saved. And you will open, and you will, you will pray to him. You will, you will seek the word. He will reveal this to you. He will show you that drastic contrast of what today's church, man's church, versus what he said. You will see it. And I pray right now, God, open the hearts, the minds. That, and, and, and he said at one point, he said, their, their eyes, lest they should see and understand. And even his apostles, uh, during a time, the Bible said, Jesus then opened he, their understanding that they might see. So I pray that right now, that you would see the contrast of what man is guiding you to and what Jesus said, what the Holy Ghost would have you to do. That's the only way we're going to make it is following the Holy Ghost, not man. Man, he said, the blind will lead the blind, but shall they both not fall in the ditch? So he said, well, well, you know, I, I, I had good intentions and, you know, I thought I was doing right. and I, Surely the Lord won't hold me liable for that. Well, why did he say that? If the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. Not only he that doeth such things, the Bible said, but also them that have pleasure in them that do them. So you're going to be guilty by propping these people up. You're going to be guilty by adding to them, showing up at their services, giving the offering plate. You want to be a part of that? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, there, there are these churches, these organizations, these crooks, these false teachers have for so long divided families. You know, you, you go to church, I've, I've heard it, I've seen it. You have a husband struggling with, with alcohol or vice versa, drugs, you name it. Oh, you got to get away from that. Oh, you don't have to take that. You don't have to put up with that. You, th there has been so many divorces caused by some ignoramus fake teacher professing they're of God. And now those kids don't have a father. They may have went, and went on to commit suicide when you all should have, by the Spirit of God, draw together as a family and seek God for healing, for support. I've seen it time and time again. I've heard about it time and time again. And, and, and you know, they use that, oh, Jesus said, oh, you know, if you don't love me more than family. If you don't love Jesus more than family, not their dumb organization, not their dumb church, not their dumb friendship. You love God more than them. God will take care of it. God is pro-family. God is for your alcoholic husband. God is for your child on drugs. God is for your sexual perverted uncle. God wants to help them, not pull you from them. 
Seek him first. These churches want to pull you away from those things. If they can't find gain, then they want to pull you away from it. First John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Revelation 19, 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the believers of Jesus, saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true, true sayings of God. And if we look at 1 Corinthians 15 and 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This is talking to believers in Jesus. Not the fake Jesus. Believers in the true spirit and in truth people. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to have that fear. You see, I, 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 we, we fight fear because we've never experienced what's on the other side. But that's where faith, and belief comes into focus. We have got to stand on the word of Jesus. And if we have the words of Jesus, and we have not allowed man to, to, to twist the scripture and move us away from our hope, then we can be confident in that day when it's either our last breath or when we shall see him coming in the clouds of glory when he says, come up hither. And in, in First Thessalonians, I, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if ye believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we will, which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself, remember, he said, if I go away, I will come again to receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, angel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And you find that we just read earlier, where I am, you'll be also. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 
And, 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 and again, we, we go on down in first Thessalonians, that was four and 13. And we go to five and one, he said, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write into you. You can see it. It's common sense. It, it's there before your own eyes for yourselves. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety. And sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. Amen. Of the day. Be sober. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Not under a pastor, not under a priest, not by going to church, not by uh, being goody two shoes and being the, being the greatest offering giver, but through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also ye do. Edify one another. Ye are all brethren. You can say, go, go to the pastor. Go, go, go pull it out of the elders. No, 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 no. So here we are. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumber and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. For our lamps are gone out. We've listened to man. Our pastor's nowhere to be found. Our priest won't pick up his phone. But the wise said, Not so. Lest there not be enough for us and you. You should have obeyed the Holy Ghost. You should have let God be true. You should have let them men be liars. You should have put God first and not allowed man get between you and your Savior. That's what you're talking about here. And while they went to buy, while they went to pray, while they went to say, God, forgive us, help us, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward, afterward, you understand this, this is something that's, that's not optional. You, you, you can't just say, you know, God is. God is not going to be there. Well, I know we've ran long and a little over what I wanted to go, but I just pray that something was said that will prick your heart, that, that you will dig deeper, find the Lord, reach, Draw nigh unto God. He, he wants you to be closer to him. 
Seek after him that happily you might find him. And God bless you. I appreciate everyone that, that listens and shares these videos, the word of the Lord. His hand is not short and that he cannot save. Enjoy your family. Support them. Gather around them. Don't let some church or some false teacher skew you from the purpose Jesus put in your heart. God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.